warm Napa cabbage goat cheese salad. Okay. All right. So we start off. We got here. Here we got Napa cabbage. We got the radicchio. We're getting out the bowl, which is right here. You need a big bowl like this. You need a sharp knife, always with the sharp knives. And then we're going to come in here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our Napa cabbage. We're going to cut it in half the long way, and then we're going to work right down through it, and take it down about three quarters of the way. For, yeah, Brad Nelson from over at Montana's Kitchen at the La Quinta Hotel, who's the executive chef, he was doing my television show on Palm Springs called Desert Life Magazine for ABC, and uh, we did a cooking segment over at Montana's Kitchen. And executive chef Brad Nelson show me how to make this. So now we get the radicchio, which is basically red cabbage. And it's a nice color, too. It's a little bit of bitter. If you taste a little bit of this, you can taste that. Uh, taste that. It's a little bit bitter. We got the goat cheese. We got the wonton skins uncut yet. There is our pancetta. That's our Italian bacon. And notice we got the. Napa cabbage and the radicchio going on over here. A little trick that you can do with garlic. People wonder how you get the garlic skin off without either taking a finger off or spending all day doing it. What I like to do is I like to press down on the garlic and then I give it a nice little cut right here. And if you watch what happens, I'm able to take off, because you're not going to want to use that piece anyway. It's hard, gross, and you just go ahead and you just give it a little squeeze and boom, there's your garlic. comes right out of there just like that. And one little tip for you with garlic, the stickier it is, the sweeter it is. And then we're going to move on to our next step, which is going to be taking these wonton skins right here, and we're going to be dicing them up the long way, just like this. Come right down on it. Because these are going to be our croutons. Mm. And we're going to fry these up in olive oil. Uh, we've got the shallot. We've also got the, you can use Chardonnay vinegar, or you can use regular white wine vinegar, too. That's going to be our emulsified dressing, we're going to go ahead and peel back the shallot now, which is kind of in the onion family. Got a little bit more of a bite than an onion, more expensive than an onion, but you'll find it used in some pretty decadent dishes. Next, we're going to come on over here, we're going to fire up the pan, get it up high. You never want to put your olive oil in until your pan is hot and ready to go. There's oh, there's popping here. going on. Okay, so we're going to throw this in here. Like that. We want to break it up a little bit too. You don't want to throw it in there like a big blob. Otherwise, you'll have a big blob with your croutons that are coming out. I'm kind of move this around a little bit, kind of break up the wonton skins a little bit. I like to leave the fire on high. If it gets a little bit too warm, I'll move it away. And I'll do the cooking over here. Oh, okay. You don't just get it on a medium? You, no, you, like to... you want to keep it fire hot. You want to cook fire hot here. If it starts to cook and get a little too hot, you just pull it away, move it around a little bit, and they'll start to cook through, so they'll start to get crispy here in a minute. That's the key to getting them crispy, is having it fiery hot? Yeah, you got to have it hot, otherwise they'll get soggy. If you put them in lukewarm olive oil, you'll have gum. Now the texture is now starting to, they're starting to bubble up a little bit in there. Oh yeah, they're getting a little crisp on it. You get a little bit dark, see right here? Notice right there, you got a little bit of Skill coloration right crispy. there. These are just about done. You'll notice it didn't take very long. You saw this in real time. About, about two, three, four minutes. Make sure you get them all nice and crispy all throughout. We come on over here. We're going to set this right in here. We're going to drain it off. Just like that. Chevre in French, which, you know, basically is the, the brand of, co of goat cheese. Is, is any goat cheese fine, or is there something special Any about goat this? cheese is fine. I mean, I like chivre. Oh. And because we're doing Italian cooking, we just take our finger, and we just go in here just like this. We just take it just <laughs> like that. All right, just like this. This is Italian. Okay, you got to love... True Italian style. you, you got to love your cooking. When you're, you're cooking, it's all about love. It's all about amore. All right, so you get this going on here. Don't worry about it, where your fingers have been. And then next, we've got two things left to do, and then we're all done with the salad. We're going to do our vinaigrette right here with olive oil, which is over there, in the blender, because we're going to emulsify the olive oil using white wine vinegar, 
shallots, garlic, salt, and pepper to taste. In an Italian home, you always the Italian home you always got to make sure you got plenty of olive oil. Not that we're going to use all this olive oil today, but again, make sure you got plenty of olive oil in the house because it's very very important. So notice I'm putting in the shallots and the garlic right into the blender. I'm then coming over here. Wine vinegar. Okay, the white wine vinegar. And then we come in here with probably, oh, maybe about a half a cup. All right. And then from there, we're going to come over and we're just going to blend this up. It's going to get noisy. You've got to have a blender that has a very, very low speed. This is really important because when you emulsify, you want your blender to be on just like a stir setting. And I'm going to get my olive oil and very slowly. Again, I'm spilling all over the thing because I cut through the doggone deal. Stand back a little bit because you might get a little bit of vinegar on the camera. I'm trying to pour this past my cut in the bottle. So you're basically doing one part vinegar and one part olive oil. Under here, you're going to see a creamy vinaigrette going on where you, where you have very little separation, if at all between the oil and the vinegar. Notice how we got a nice cream going on in there right now. Wonderful. We're going to get a little bit of organic salt. We're going to get our pepper. I like to use some fresh pepper in here. And then we got our kosher salt. Don't get too happy, but we do want to salt it up a little bit here. All right, there we go. A couple tablespoons of salt in that mixture. And then we just bring it on again into the stir mode. Our pancetta, which is right here, which is the Italian. I like to roll it up a little bit because it's easier to cut. Italian bacon. And we're going to cut this up into, into little squares but because we're going to fry this up. This is how we're making our warm dressing. So we're going to take this going on over here. We're going to come back over and fire this up. Back to high. We're going to drop a little bit of olive oil in here just to get things going. Then we're going to take this right here, which is our pancetta. And we're going to drop it in here. It's a very lean bacon, although it looks like there may be some fatty things going on in there. It really renders off very little fat. Okay, so really the last two steps are getting this pancetta cooked down, which doesn't take long at all. We're going to cook it over high heat. And we're breaking things up a little bit here. And we're going to actually retain, we're not going to render off the fat. In other words, we're not going to pour this fat out. We're going to use it. You can see how lean it is. A lot of that's olive oil that I put in there first. So you've got a combination of olive oil to give a kickstart along with the, the fat that's rendered off of the Italian bacon or the pancetta. Here we can actually take our wontons now and we can drop those in right over the top. Okay? Okay, so you'll notice it's just cooking down. It's starting to brown up like regular bacon. And we're going to let that cook just a little bit more, make sure we get it cooked up pretty good. Here again, we're back on the blender. We're going to get things moving in there. We've got our bacon going on over here, ready to go. Now watch this little move. That's mixed up pretty good. You're going to come on right over here with the blender, right over the top. Boom. No, you're not. Just like he that. did it. There you go, just like that. And we're going to let that reduce down for a little bit. Maybe 30 or 60 seconds, they'll start to come to a nice boil. Because remember, we're dealing with cabbage over here. We're dealing with, you know, Napa cabbage and radicchio, which can stand the heat. And with the goat cheese that we're going to want melted, we're going to come right in with this hot vinaigrette. Okay? All right, here we go. So we got this going on here. You can smell it. Watch your nose. Smell that. Get your nose in there. Huh? Oh, my goodness. Then we're coming right over the top, just like this. Boom. Just like that, a couple of wooden sticks, and we're just going to give it a spin to get everything moving. Notice how that cheese is melting now. And there we go. And there you have it. The warm Napa cabbage goat cheese salad, cooked to perfection, made for you in Tony Marino's kitchen. Love you, God bless, salute, and the manja. There you go. I'm going to paint.